This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated about true crime stories of insurance fraud. I present videos to you so that you can learn how insurance fraud is perpetrated and what is necessary to deter or defeat insurance fraud. This video blog of true crime stories of insurance fraud with the names and places changed to protect the guilty are all based upon investigations conducted by me and fictionalized to create a learning environment for claims personnel, SIU investigators, insurers, police, and lawyers better understand insurance fraud and weapons that can be used to deter or defeat a fraudulent insurance claim. This story is called The Tiffany Kid and took up a great deal of my life as a young lawyer working for insurers who were faced with a potential fraudulent claim. The insured grew up with his wealthy parents on the shores of San Francisco Bay in Marin County. He wanted for nothing that money could buy. He was tall, blonde, blue-eyed and handsome. Debutantes pulled their sister's hair for the chance to dance with him. Life was good, but dull. The insured tried drugs. The results disappointed him. He was brilliant, so college was no challenge. He felt he would die from the boredom. Nothing seemed to challenge his intelligence. He found the cure for his boredom one summer vacation from college. On a dare, he surreptitiously entered the home of a neighbor. He removed a single, solid brass and stained glass dragonfly lamp made by Louis Comfort Tiffany in the 1920s. From this single event, he found more excitement, a greater high than he had ever had with drugs. The flow of adrenaline as he entered his neighbor's dwelling was delicious. He had found the excitement he wanted. He had finally found a way to relieve the boredom and lack of challenge in his life. He did not steal for profit. He stole for excitement. He did not need the lamp. He could have bought many similar lamps with the money in his trust fund. But like all addictions, burglary on a small scale continued. His burglaries occurred in Marin County and in the small college town where he went to school. He specialized in burglary limited to removing Tiffany lamps and objects of art from their proper owners. He managed to collect a rather considerable collection of Tiffany, which was very highly valued. Burglary, however, was too easy. The challenge and the excitement of burglary had lost its glow. He needed a new challenge. He needed human interaction. He needed to defeat another human being. Burglary, by definition, is a solitary activity. The solution to his boredom was to invest in insurance fraud. He would obtain a policy on the results of his burglary efforts and then report them stolen. To obtain the policy, he first retained a fine arts appraiser to appraise the collection of Tiffany lamps he had gathered over the last five years of burglary. The results of the appraisal shocked him. He found the lamps had a retail value of over $500,000. He used the appraisal to get personal articles insured through what is called a personal articles floater, a PAF, policy of insurance, from a major surplus line insurer. He waited until the policy was ripe and then, with his considerable expertise in burglary, the insured staged a burglary at his residence. 
He made claim to his insurer for the loss of all of the scheduled Tiffany lamps he claimed were stolen. When visited by the adjuster, the insured found the challenge that he had sought when burglary became a bore. Sitting in his living room across from an experienced investigator, he reveled in what he believed to be a battle of wits. Because of the amount involved, the insurer had retained the services of an independent adjuster and private investigator with more than 30 years' experience. The insurer knew he would not have a simple task in front of him. He had expected the insurer to send their usual 22-year-old novice adjuster who came to adjust a fender bender claim two years before. The insured made certain he was in absolute emotional control. When the silver-haired adjuster placed his recorder between them and started taking a recorded statement about the loss. Since this was the first time for the insured, he did not know what to expect. He answered the questions posed to him glibly and with certainty, always looking the investigator directly in the eye. He kept complete physical control of his body. Neither his gestures nor physical appearance showed outward signs of the nervousness and flow of adrenaline that the interview caused him. His only difficulty came when the investigator asked for the ownership history of the Tiffany lamps. Obviously, the insured could not tell him that he had gained possession of the lamps by burglary. Rather, he advised the adjuster that he had received the lamps as a gift from his grandparents shortly before they died in a tragic automobile accident. There was no record of the transfer. There was no one alive who could verify the means by which he acquired the lamps. The adjuster could not verify the insured's acquisition of the lamps. The insured had read Jostchevsky's novel, Crime and Punishment. He knew the way to commit a perfect crime was to admit everything about his actions during the time of the commission of the crime, except the crime itself. If there are no witnesses, neither the investigating police officers nor the investigating insurer have leads. Disproving the statements made became impossible. The insured showed the investigator the point of entry where he had broken out a small glass window in the rear door of his premises. It revealed easy entry to the house. He showed the adjuster where the lamps had been. He explained how they had been carefully removed from the premises. He speculated that the thief was a collector or working for a collector since nothing else was stolen. He admitted that this was his first PAF that scheduled the Tiffany lamps. He had had a homeowner's policy, but never considered the lamps to be exceedingly valuable. The insured said that he had been reading an article in the New Yorker magazine in his dentist's office that said that stained glass bronze lamps made by Lewis Cuthbert Tiffany had become the latest collector's craze. The article caused him to believe that the values of his Tiffany lamps were appreciating with considerable speed. He explained to the adjuster that because of the article, he retained the services of a fine arts appraiser. He needed to know the value of the gift made by his grandparents. He was shocked at the result of the appraisal and was fearful of the value he might lose if anything happened to the lamps. He therefore immediately went out and bought a policy. The insured told the investigator he had no idea who might wish to burglarize him. He was basically a loner with few friends. None of his friends knew of the value of his collection of lamps. He was totally distraught by their loss, since they were the only ties to his dear departed grandparents. Near the end of the statement, the insured's eyes welled up with tears and he had to ask for a short break to get control of himself. The investigator left the insured's premises with a feeling engendered by his 30 years of experience that there was something wrong with the claim. 
He was certain that the insured had not told him the truth. The facts of the acquisition of the lamps, the method by which the insured decided to buy a personal articles floater, and the tears all raised his suspicions. He did everything he could to find some facts to prove his suspicions. He checked public records and found the insured had no criminal record. The insured was never a party in a civil lawsuit. He owned his home and his own business. No motive for insurance fraud existed. The insured was wealthy. The investigator contacted a few friends that the insured advised him may have seen the Tiffany lamps. Each verified the lamps were in the house. They had no information how the insured acquired the lamps. They reported the insured had considerable wealth and would have no trouble in making such a purchase. The investigator, faced with no leads and nothing but a gut feeling that there was something wrong with the claim, informed the insurer of his conclusions. The investigator recommended that the insurer issue a proof of loss for the amount of the policy and pay the claim. The insurer followed his advice. The claim was paid in full. The insured successfully completed the fraud. The insured had found new meaning in his life. He thoroughly enjoyed the challenge of the interaction with an experienced investigator. The insured used the money he stole from the insurer to add to his collection of Tiffany lamps. This time he actually bought them instead of stealing them. Over the next 15 years since his first attempt, the insured perpetrated the same fraud on different insurers waiting three years between each claim loss. The delay, of course, existed so he could honestly report to the insurer when he applied for a new policy that he had incurred no losses within the last three years. Unlike the other stories in this series, this one, like most insurance fraud, successfully separated an insurer from its money illegally. The insured received half a million dollars for a burglary that did not occur. The insurer, faced with nothing more than a gut feeling, held by an experienced adjuster and investigator, was forced to pay what it believed to be a fraudulent claim. If it did not pay, the insurer knew it would find itself sued for the breach of the covenant of good faith and fair dealing. It might be required to pay punitive and exemplary damages in addition to the value of the lamps because it had no admissible evidence that a fraud had occurred. The insurer, after the policy was issued, had no choice to defeat this fraud. Its chance came and went at the time it accepted the insured's application without first investigating the insured in the lamps. The insurer failed to protect itself by accepting the insurance without requiring that the insured establish his ownership and and legitimate possession of the lamps. It also did not protect itself by requiring the insured to warrant before the issuance of the policy facts concerning the insured, the acquisition of the lamps, their ownership and value. The insurer failed to require the maintenance of appropriate security systems that would have made the faking of a burglary more difficult. A monitored central station alarm with contacts on all doors and windows and infrared detectors to detect motion throughout the dwelling that would record every entry and exit from the premises would have made the fraud more difficult, if not impossible. Warranties and security requirements do not always stop an attempt to defraud, nor do they always defeat a real burglary. By not having the security requirements, the insurer made the crime easy for the insured. It almost deprived the insured of the challenge he wanted. Insurers, if they wish to keep frauds like that described here, must stop making the crime easy. Underwriters must understand that insureds do not 
always treat their insurers with utmost good faith. Risks must be looked at with skepticism. If fraud is to be defeated, insurers must make the crime more of a challenge. It is too easy. Honest insureds are tempted to commit fraud because it is too easy. But there is a happy ending. Twenty years after his first successful fraud, the insured presented an identical claim to an insurer whose adjuster knew the adjuster on the first claim, who the insured reported he had been insured by Lloyds of London as a person who had worked for Lloyds in the past. The call to the old adjuster only asked who at Lloyds the new adjuster could call about a loss of Tiffany Lamps. The response he received was a surprise. The old adjuster asked if the loss was incurred by the insured by name. Records were pulled from storage and presented to the insurer's lawyers showing the claim was for the same Tiffany lamps allegedly stolen 20 years before. The information of the prior claim was presented to the insured's lawyer, an honest and honorable person, who immediately withdrew the claim and then withdrew his representation of the insured. The insured's last attempt was a failure. Although he was due to try again, he moved his attempt to find excitement to different types of fraud. Amazingly, each of his successful claims were for the loss of the same Tiffany lamps, which he still owns and maintains. This video was adapted from my book, Insurance Fraud Costs Everyone, which is available as a Kindle book and a paperback from Amazon.com. Thank you for your attention.